of the great lady, or Divan, as she was called in the Irish, who held sway over this revered and wondrous place. An Othud Nagoniach and Divan, for Grotham, Esmeir, Harmanol. What shall we do for the timber? The last of the woods is down. Till cash and the house of its story, and the bell of the house is gone. The spot where that lady waited who shamed all women for grace, when earls came sailing to greet her, and mass was said in the place. I learned that song at school as a boy in Carrick and Shore. Like all songs of past times, it was peopled with what I thought of as mythical figures. But one day I happened on a scene which brought the myth and the reality together before my very eyes. As my kids and I wandered about the ruins of Kilcash, a man who lived in one of the cottages nearby recognised me as one of the Clancy's. You're one of the singers, aren't you? Leem, is it? I knew your father, Bob, from the insurance business. He used to call you by the English version of your name, Willie. Well, now this is good. Do you see the old church down there below the castle? That's been there since the seventh century. And inside that church, there's a headstone with your name on it, William Clancy. The Board of Works are trying to save what's left of the early church, and the big stones are pulled back from the underground vault. There was a hint of awe in his voice. They've cleared away decades of debris. If you go down the steps and let your eyes get used to the dark, you'll see herself stretched out there on thy van, the great lady, Lady Iva, with two other skeletons, her husband, a Richard Butler, I believe he was, and the bishop of the time, whose name I can't call. Hmm. Their lead coffins were taken by the IRA to make bullets during the Black and Tan War. When the three kids and I went down into the chamber of the dead, sure enough, there on the rubble of the vault floor were the bones, red and mouldering, of the woman I used to sing about in school. The kids and I gazed a long moment in fascination before beating a retreat back up to daylight. As with many ruined churches in Ireland, the graves of what I suppose to be the important people are inside the church walls, while the lesser folk have to lie outside in the adjoining graveyard. As we made our way to the main part of the church, an old man wandering from headstone to toppling headstone said, Ah, oh, there's class distinction everywhere, even in the graveyard. Searching through the gravestones within the ruined walls, trying to decipher the weather-beaten names, I came upon the one my friend had referred to. Since it was made from hard slate and leaning away from the worst of the weather, it was easy to make out the names. Among them was one that read Willem Clancy, died May 11th, 1735. He had died 200 years and nearly four months before I was born. Now, I don't believe in reincarnation, at least not like that. But it did make me stop for a moment and wonder. Who was he then, I thought, this namesake of mine? Possibly a Breton lawyer or bard attached to the big house. The Clancy's were reputed to be Breton lawyers or bards since medieval times. Lady Iva may have, have been William Clancy's patroness. In my own case, it was a wealthy American lady who took me under her patronage and started my career off in the new world. I wanted to know more about the man. Was he a relative? What was life like in his day? I wished he could tell his story, but the grave is a silent place. The words of the Greek poet Nikos Kazantzakis came to mind. He said, when a man dies, that aspect...